Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-24. Our previous episode ended with the party victorious over a group of wandering bugbears. After eluding the bodies, the PCs discovered a bag similar to the ones the brigands had carried at the shoreline battle. They believe it belongs to the individual from the tavern in Wagmar, and possibly the thief who had stolen the heart of the golem. We return now as darkness begins to fall an hour after their battle. Well, I vote we stay here for the night. I can't see roaming around these empty plains as being anything but a bad idea, said Phidias the Gnome. I'm inclined to agree, commented Grish. The northern plains are filled with those damn bugbears, and they can hide pretty well in the dark. Omel and the others nodded and confirmed the course of action. We'll spend the night here and pick it up in the morning. We'll set a watch with two people at a time. Harris piped up, stating that he would start to gather wood for a fire, but was stopped by Yolanda. I don't think we should risk an open flame, quipped the fighter. Even a small fire could be seen for a mile or two. The group looked around the open plain and knew she was correct. We'll just have to huddle next to the horses for warmth. Phidias eased up next to her and made a whinny noise, which garnered a quick backhand from Yolanda, who replied, You wish. Brother Stance spoke up and volunteered for first watch, and a quick Me Too from Harris followed. Yolanda and Grish sponsored the second watch, with Omel and Phidias taking the last. A cold meal of rations was eaten by the group as the winds started to pick up. A few hours into darkness, the Zenobian cleric and Yolanda Two Blades were woken up. Stance reported nothing unusual aside from some storm clouds passing overhead. The two Denali citizens prepared themselves and set up several yards away from the group. Have you noticed anything unusual with the monk? began the cleric. I've noticed ever since town he's been acting strangely. I don't know him well, but we've been together long enough I'm picking up on something. I wonder if he knows more about this mysterious thief than he is letting on. Don't get me wrong, he continued. I think he's a stand-up guy, but something just doesn't seem right. Yolanda listened intently and showed indifference on her face. No, I hadn't noticed much of any difference. It's probably nothing. Grish cocked his head at her and thought for a moment before he spoke. You know, you've got to tell. She asked, she asked the cleric, tell? What do you mean? Grish continued and waved his finger at her. You know, a tell, a giveaway, like when a gambler is bluffing. Your eye twitches, and I've noticed it before, well, years ago. The female maintained a blank stare and an awkward silence ensued as the two stared at each other for several moments. Yolanda finally blinked and Grish smiled. A look of frustration now filled Yolanda's face. Fine, she exclaimed. Yes, he is different, but it's nothing but malevolent. Grish crossed his arms, waiting for her to continue. She put her hands on her hips and continued. Look. I promise not to say anything, you'll just have to trust me on this one. The Zenobian looked at her for a few moments, thought, and then nodded his head. I trust your judgment, and I accept that answer. He looked away and scanned the horizon for any threats as she looked puzzled. You trust me? she said skeptically. He turned back to face her. Yes, I do, and perhaps I sh always should have known. I made a rash decision with you and the guards years ago. I am sorry for that. Having been on this mission this long has shown me the error of my ways. I am truly sorry. Yolanda was clearly taken aback by this confession, but quickly shrugged it off. 
Apology accepted, Grish. Why, thank you, his response came quickly. No, thank you, milady. I was wrong and you deserved better. Thank you for accepting the apology. She began to speak, but a glowing orb began to approach from the north behind the large cleric. She launched herself, taking the man down with surprise and quickly covering his mouth as he began to complain. She motioned for him to be silent and pointed a few feet behind him. The pair looked up over the plain's grasses to see the strange orb swaying lazily. In a hushed tone, Yolanda whispered, I'll get the others. But the cleric tugged at her arm, holding her back. As they watched, the circle began to dim light around the area. It then began to move away and return. Grish gasped out, I think it wants it to follow it. The two looked at each other and scanned the perimeter. Seeing no threats, they rose up in an aggressive posture, causing the orb to rapidly move backwards. Puzzled, the pair eased their position and the ball began to dance back and forth. Grish and Yolanda continued to follow the orb for several hundred yards, scanning the area for an attack, but finding none. After several minutes of following the light, it stopped and rested on the ground. The pair crept up to the illumination and observed the ball resting on a battered corpse. What the Hades? said Grish in a hushed tone. What happened to this guy? The orb moved to the other side of the body, allowing the pair to examine the figure more closely. Hey, isn't that the same cloak as the twits on the beach were wearing? asked Yolanda. Grish nodded in agreement and spoke. Looks like the bugbears found him first. Doesn't look like he's been dead for more than a day or two. The orb rose from the ground and 20 feet into the air before blazing through the night sky until the pair couldn't see it anymore. Well, that just adds to the mystery, said Yolanda. We'd better get back to camp in case this light thing was a ruse. We can investigate it more in the morning, said the cleric. Besides, it's time to go kick Phidias awake. Yolanda smirked and they looked at each other. Each put forth an arm and did a quick rock paper dagger, which was won by the fighter. Aha! she exclaimed. I get to do the honors. The pair made their way back to the camp where Omel and the gnome were roused from their slumber. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.